Hello girls and boys. <gasps> Happy Monday. I hope you're all okay and that you've had a lovely weekend. I wonder what you've been doing. Have you done something lovely? You've been in the garden? You've been for a walk or a scooter? A jog or a run? Maybe you've made a cake, played with your toys, done a jigsaw puzzle, drawn a picture? I don't know. There's so many things you've probably been busy doing. And now at the end of the day, it's time for our bedtime story. Now today I found this one. It's called the Talkative Tortoise. Sadly, he's not called Gerald, but he's a talkative tortoise. Now, I've never heard my Gerald the Tortoise talk before, so I wonder what this to talkative tortoise is going to talk about. Gosh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. I wonder what this talkative tortoise is going to talk about. There you go. Well, let's find out. Are you sitting comfortably? I'm sure you are. Here we go. Right, the talkative tortoise. One day, Tortoise Coil crawled to the edge of the lake to have a wash, a drink and a chat. At the water's edge, he met his two best friends. Oh, he is there. His, pair, his best friends were a pair of geese. Tortoise was lucky because geese are known to be extremely good listeners and tortoise could talk like nobody's business. Do you think it's easy to keep my shell as shiny and smooth as this? He asked as he waded into the lake. Of course not, said the geese. I have to wash my shell over and over with the finest lake water and then shine it with the softest moss I can find, said Tortoise, splashing about in the cool water. The geese nodded their heads and gave a little quack or two. They'd heard this story a hundred times. One day, as the first snow fell on the far mountains, the geese decided it was time to fly south. And they fly south because it's warmer there and they like to stay warm in the winter. It'll be winter soon, one said. We need to fly to our feeding grounds. Tortoise began to cry. But you can't leave me behind. I'll be so lonely. Who will I talk to? Who will I play with? Who will look after me? Sorry, said the other goose. Yak and sheep will have to keep you company, but we have to leave. Tortoise had a huge tantrum. He sobbed. <gasps> he sighed. <sighs> oh, 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 it's not fair. Can't I come too? But you can't fly, said one of the geese. Carry me, carry me, replied the tortoise. We can't carry you, your shell is too smooth. It would slip out of our beak, said the other goose. Please, 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 pretty please, said the, begged the tortoise as tears rolled down his scaly cheeks. The geese discussed the problem and soon came up with a solution. One of them waddled off into a bush and came back dragging a sturdy stick. Wonder what they're going to do with that. We will lift both ends and you must bite on the middle of the stick with your strong jaw, said the first goose. And hold on tight, said the second, which means you mustn't talk the whole time we are flying. Do you think he can do that? Let's be positive. <laughs> Tortoise smiled. His two best friends had come to the rescue. Oh, that's easy. I can stay quiet for seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, seasons and years. We get the point, Tortoise, said the first goose. You'd better do as we say, warned the second. Because if he opens his mouth while they're flying through the air, what would happen? The very next morning, the wind was light and the sky was clear as crystal. So the two geese clamped, end of the, clamped each end of the stick in their beaks and asked Tortoise to hold on. He crawled up to the middle of the stick 
opened his mouth as wide as he could and bit down hard. The geese flapped their wings, struggling with the extra weight, but within seconds they were rising into the air. Tortoise was true to his word, keeping his mouth firmly shut and closing his eyes in terror. Why do you think he was terrified? I think you're right, because he was holding on with his mouth and he couldn't fly, so if he falls off, oh, he'd crash down to the ground. When he finally opened his eyes, Tortoise saw that the geese had flown above the lake and the plain. He was fascinated. He could see sheep, goats, yurts and people. He wanted to tell his good friends all about it, but remembered just in time to stay quiet. They flew over the rolling plains, dotted with villages, rivers, and rivers filled with houseboats and boats carrying vegetables to market. Soon the air grew cold as they climbed towards the mountain. Tortoise was desperate to tell his friends all about it, but he remembered just in time to stay quiet. They soared over the mountain tops and down into India. Soon they left the snow behind and there were lush green forests below. In time, his friends flew over a village. People looked up and shouted, Look! Two geese carrying a tortoise! Tortoise was annoyed. He wanted to say to the geese they should mind their own business, but he managed, just in time, to remember his promise to keep his lips tightly closed. That's good news that he remembered just in time. Tortoise loved the feeling of flying. The wind brushed his shell, giving it even more of a polish while his eyes feasted on the wonderful sights and sounds of the miniature world below. There was so much he wanted to tell the geese, but it would have to wait until he landed. He's doing very well to stay quiet and to not talk. As, as the sun began to set and they flew over a town, the people looked up and laughed. Amazing! <gasps> Have you ever seen anything so funny? It's a flying tortoise, they said. Tortoise was so angry. The people should have been impressed by how clever he was to hitch a ride with his two best friends. His lips twitched. His teeth clattered together and his tongue began to dance inside his mouth. Oh, I hope he's not going to say anything. I hope he's not going to talk. I'd hate for him to fall down. I would be sad. As the townspeople far below burst into laughter, their laughter spread like ripples across a pond. Tortoise could hold back no longer. Oh, do be quiet, you fools, he said. Oh, what's he done? Oh, he's opened his mouth. He's let go of the stick. Oh, no. Whoops. Tortoise realised his mistake too late. He'd opened his mouth. He didn't even have time to say goodbye to his friends. Instead, he fell like a big, shiny stone, straight down <gasps> to the ground. Tortoise landed with a huge bump, bounced twice and rolled over rocks and soil until finally he came to rest. His once smooth shell was now cracked and rough all over. And it's still like that today.
There he is, going crash, bang, and thump. There he is now, with his cracked, rough shell. So if you ever try talking to a tortoise, he won't give you an answer. No way. He's finally learned his lesson. Now he knows, as we all should, when to keep his mouth closed. Maybe now I know why Gerald never speaks. Because oh. at the beginning, can you see how smooth the shell is? There are no cracks, there are no bumps, and there are no lumps. But at the end, so different. Well, I did enjoy that one. He met so many well, he didn't meet. He saw so many different things as he was flying across the world. His best friends were with him nearly all of the time. They did everything they could to help him, and I'm sure they made him happy. Well, that's the end of our story today. I hope you now are ready for bed. Let's just check. Have you cleaned your teeth? Have you been to the toilet for one last time? And... Are you wearing whatever you wear ready for bed? And if not, I know you'll be doing that very, very soon. So, have a lovely sleep. Dream big dreams. Think happy thoughts. And we'll be back tomorrow with another story for you. But for now, from my house to your house, it's time to say good night. So good night, girls and boys and everybody else who's listening to today's story. I will see you soon, I hope. I'll be back for story and probably tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.